welcome everybody again to this class on character development and seminar, which is built to help you develop a Christian character, to help you maximize your Christian faith, and to get the best out of salvation. Praise the Lord. Character is you, and you are your character. I was talking to a pastor friend of mine yesterday. He said to me, he said, without knowing what we are doing here, he said, the biggest problem we have in the church now is that people don't have character. Without knowing that this people is going on. He said, lack of character is the biggest problem in the church today, the problem of character. And he said, the church is not doing anything about it. And I was listening to him when he finished. I said, we are running character development classes. He said, what? I said, yes, we are running character development classes. You see, God has put us ahead with this revelation so that we can be better positioned to maximize opportunities that God will give to us in the kingdom. Amen. Amen. You can maximize. One of the things you must have in mind is that as you attend these classes and you begin to adjust yourself, adjust your heart, adjust your life, reset your heart, God can call upon you to take up any responsibility. Even what you never thought you were able to do. Amen. Remember what God said? He said, because you have rejected knowledge, you have also rejected you from being priests unto me. Amen. Amen. Which also means that when you accept knowledge, when you receive knowledge, God then also can deploy you in ministry. Amen. Amen. Deploy you in ministry. Praise the Lord. Uh, when, if you look at the Bible, when the marriage of the it was the fathers that drew a party. To celebrate. That, 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 that's what is in the Bible. It's not the person coming to marry. The person that comes to marry can do out of free will. But it's the family of the bride that do the party. Check the Bible. Check the Bible. It happened with Rebecca. Amen. Mm -hmm. It happened with Jacob and uh, Rachel. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was Labor that drew the party. We turned the Bible upside down to go ahead and it actually inflicts damage upon us. And when we talk about character development, and we say that marriage, you know, should be according to the word of God, we are not trying to make it cheap to get married. No, we are trying to have the right focus in marriage. Wedding day is not marriage. Wedding day is not marriage. I just read something that somebody posted saying that she has always wanted it. A, a nice white wedding, and she spent 15 million on her own. Does that make sense? That's stupidity. No reasonable man should spend, should spend 15 million on marriage. They should take her to make the money. Praise the Lord. These things, <clears throat> when God sends people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, covetousness and, and worldly lust. It's a sin. You want to have something that you have seen in the world. In the world. It doesn't work like that. We shouldn't desire worldliness. We shouldn't desire worldliness. You know, in the kingdom, we have a different priority. And that is why when we are born again, it is important that you reset your heart. You reset your heart according to kingdom priorities. Jesus said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be according to you. We don't program our life with the world, we program our lives with the world. Are you hearing me? Now, um, being taught about spiritual things. Being taught, being enlightened about spiritual things can make a great change in your life. In 
2 Timothy. Uh, first, let's read from 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Paul, writing to Timothy, said, If you instruct the brethren in these things, you will be a good minister of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. If you instruct the brethren in these things, in these things, you will be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished in the words of faith and of the good doctrine which you have carefully followed. So, for you to be properly taught and educated, you will change your life. You will change your life. And some of the best instructions for a believer you will find between Timothy and Titus because. Paul was talking to his true sons. Paul was not talking to the church. Paul was talking to who is called his sons in ministry. Amen. So if you really truly want to understand how to build up your character as a believer in Christ, in God, go to read Timothy and Titus. Like for instance, when Paul said to do it, it's study to show that self approved unto God. It's the same thing that God said in Hosea forces that people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And then Paul said to Timothy, study to show that self approval to God. Because God will disapprove anybody that does not study. It's a simple pastor. God is the one who disapproves anybody that does not study. You may not like it, but that's the word of God. There is no way you get knowledge apart from being taught and studied in the word. There's no way. So to build yourself up, to equip yourself, it, it takes knowledge. And Paul said to him, if you will instruct the brethren in these things, you will be a good minister. My prayer is that I will be a good minister in instructing you to do what is right yeah. and to live right for God. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. And that is why when I search through the scriptures and I see certain things that has nothing to do with the word of God, in the system of the church, in the doctrines of the church, it makes me uncomfortable. And sometimes you just say, should I keep quiet or should I say it? And then, um, it was many years ago, many years ago, when I should have to get this thing in the spirit and there's something wrong now. I believe church is operating at a very point. There's something wrong about it. Now, because I was in the system then, that praying the talk was magnified. I was struggling with it. I, I, I love my pastor very much and I respect him very much. But I know that there was excesses in the area of being in God. And Papa Hicken said something, he said, no matter what anybody says, judge it according to the word of God. No pastor, no minister is beyond mistake. I want you to understand that. And that is why Every pastor, every minister is a student of the Holy Spirit. You can get it wrong. I can get it wrong. And the way we learn is by studying and studying and studying and studying and studying. So when I looked at bringing tongues and I realized that really bringing tongues was being accused and all that, I looked through the scriptures, I read the scripture, and what the Bible says and what the church is operating. It doesn't happen. Praise the Lord. It doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. And, and I, I have my pastor say, say when you are praying in tongues, you are giving your angel instruction to God, and I don't have this and bring the money in for you and all that. It sounds good. So people will do it with our no, no, but you can see it in the Bible. Are you hearing me? You can see it in the Bible. Praying in tongues, you don't give instruction to angels. You are speaking unto the Lord. Because it's only him that can decode the tongue. 
There is no way it's written that angels will be good at all. Amen. Amen. And then, of course, you have people that say that if you're not able to bring the doctor, the doctor will not feel the way you go. That's not true. That's what we're going to say. That's not what we have to say. Amen. Amen. When it comes to school, everybody should be happy when it's done. But it doesn't, it's not an evidence that you're feeling the Holy Spirit. It's not. It's not. If you check the gift of the Spirit, and that is where education is important. Because there are many people that are in self condemnation because they don't speak in tongues. They think that why I don't like, I, I suffer from it when I say young Christian, I suffer. I don't abuse of the wrong. I told them I was be so wrong. But remember what the scripture said? The scripture said that the spirit gives to every man as he wills. Amen. You are only to desire, but it's up to the Holy Spirit to give. And that is why being educated will help you to be balanced as a Christian. And when God said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, we come under that bondage because of lack of knowledge. For instance, you see a family that is struggling financially and their daughter is getting married. And they come under intense financial pressure because they say they don't want to be, to be put to shape. They want their daughter to have a big wedding. A white way. And they bring themselves under that bondage. I mean that it is not necessary. Amen. Mm-hmm. You can marry your daughter on the weekend, Friday, Saturday, Thanksgiving or Sunday, and nobody will know. And that marriage will be as wonderful as any other marriage. It's not what you spend for wedding day that makes a marriage good. And yet, this yoke has come into the church. Young men now, when they are due to marry, they start counting the cost. You shouldn't be like that. You shouldn't be like that. And then you see Muslims, when they want to get married, they just go there, pa, 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 pa. they got you, they go over the person, go over their marriage. You don't get any money. You don't get any money. You get it. But the Christians have gotten into ceremonies. Pick them. I will call it unbeliever ceremony. The same thing with prayer. The Christian want to give her the wonderful, befitting burial. Amen. And the most of the time, <laughs> my uncle's wife makes this as a joke. She said, when it comes to death and burial, she wants to be a Muslim. <laughs> That's what she said. She said that this she would treat her as a Muslim. When she died, she doesn't believe her. But she's making a point. Do you know that people bury their put them in debt? Christians. And somebody has to stand and say, listen, let's talk in let's talk in this things. This thing is not scriptural. This thing does not affect our faith. This thing we actually should know better. That once the man, so called it, that there's nothing like recipes. If you didn't prepare your peace right for life, you won't rest in peace when you are there. It's a good. Praise the Lord. So the best peace you can give you is a good view. So that when you die, you won't be in pieces. Amen. Amen. So you see that this class is, even though it's character, but it will set the good foundation of the Christian faith. So you be a good minister of God. You saw that if you are leading anywhere in a department, you are grounded in the work. You are well established. Praise the Lord. You are sound in doctrine. And that's why he says to Timothy, he says to Timothy, it's a study to show that some are to God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, rightly dividing the word, rightly dividing the word of God. That is being able to ah. Being able to look at the scriptures and say, This is what the word of God says, this is the word of God, and this is part of the gift of the Spirit. You are able to discern what God is saying in the word. Praise the Lord. God said, Talk about me when you sit together with your children. God said, Tell your children what I have done for you. 
The Bible said in Psalm 127 that children are a gift from the Lord. Praise the Lord. And the children are the reward of the Lord. Children are a gift from the Lord. How many times do you sit your children down together and tell them, do you know you are a gift from the Lord? How many times have you spoken to your children over and over and over again that you are a gift and a reward from the Lord? But you will tell them, I carry you nine months only. Are you hearing me? You will tell them, I carried you and you suck my breast for how many months? Six months. You talk. You only carry them nine months. What about the one that will carry them for the rest of their lives? Have you introduced your children to him? Have you told your children that they didn't come from you, but they have come from God? Shout hallelujah. And so, when, when I understood many years ago, many years ago, and I said to her, I think I said to one or two people in Munich, I said, What the Lord has taught me about tithing, and what the Lord has taught me about praying in tongues, I said, I can't teach it because I am under authority. I can't teach it because it will go against the ministry where I was serving. But I knew that I was under a monk. I knew there was something wrong. And the best way is for me to keep it for the bishops and appointed them. But now in this family church, I can teach you because it's the truth of God's word. Praise the Lord. But I can say that you can go to an extreme on any subject of faith or any subject in the Bible. You can go to the extreme. And that is why you need to be careful. He said, be balanced. Stay in the middle. Stay in the middle. Praise the Lord. Amen. When you look at the gift of the Spirit, bring in thoughts is actually the least. It's actually the least. If you get me a Christian that can walk in love, I will take that Christian first and remove the one that prays in tongues. Amen. If I have one Christian that walk in love, I will take him over 10 Christians that pray in tongues and it's all of tongues. <laughs> I will take the one that walk in love. Amen. Amen. You will accomplish more walking in love than praying in tongues. That's the truth. It's in the Bible. And Paul said, Here, I show you what? A more excellent word. Amen. I show you what? A more excellent way. So, <clears throat> Paul said to Timothy, study to show that I have approved unto God. A one man that he did not do it. When you are armed with the truth, you cannot be ashamed. When you are armed with the truth, you cannot be ashamed. I said, we should read from Romans chapter 12. <clears throat> Romans chapter 12. Very, very important. Remember what I said to you that born again is actually to be born again is a transaction. Yeah. You swap the stony heart for the heart of flesh. Praise the Lord. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. So, as a new creation, when you are spoken to, you listen, change. Because you don't have the heart of stone anymore. When you are corrected, who is the church? Why do we need to use the word of God to correct our lifestyle? Because the word is our life. It is our life. Amen. Amen. If the word cannot correct your problem, you are hopeless. Any situation that the word of God cannot fix. It's a hopeless situation. And that is why, because the word of God is all powerful, omnipotent. That is why there is nothing you bring under the word that cannot be changed. So we should look at the word of God 
as the ultimate, ultimate in solving our life's problem. That is the actual thing that happens when we get born again. We come out of the world system and their solutions. <clears throat> Being born again, we come out of the world system and solution. We come into the world system and solution. Amen. Amen. And the solution of the world is superior to the system of the world and the solution. Even though the one of the world seems to give immediate relief, so to speak, like if you have headache and they say if you take paladin, if you stop it, uh, the headache, you took it, it will stop it. Praise the Lord. It will come again next week. You will take it. You come again the week after I do not, you come again, you come again, you come again. And so they get you for that paladin. Amen. The word says you can stop, you can stop headache. Amen. Amen. The first battle, maybe you fought it a whole day, and the headache was trying to stay and you were fighting it. You were fighting it. And eventually, two days later, the headache left you. It will not come again. Praise the Lord. That is the difference between Zion solution and worldly solution. We will fight and win. We stay one. Amen. It will take us time to establish the first victory. <laughs> Remember what the Bible said, what the Bible said, you shall be permanent. You establish the first victory. It becomes permanent in your life. Amen. Amen. And so, the, 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 the effort to achieve the first result like now, when we talk about your character, changing your character, changing your behavior, changing your conduct, you think, I don't know, it's, it's not easy. Just to let people that offend you go, just not to talk back, just not, not, not to curse, not to be bitter, to be fucking talk. You think, I don't know, it. that lifestyle has cost me millions. Whereby, if I go the one thing where I will come to my but will it glorify God? How will the money glorify God? But well, after you have gotten the money, will you still have peace? And so you let go. You let go millions. You let go. Even though you know the easy way to get a solution, but you let go. You let go. It costs you something. It costs you something. But um, you will earn something also with the Lord. The Lord knows that you have forfeited it because of his name. And so the Lord can trust you that in times of trouble, you will not go the world way. Amen. Amen. And so God begins to bless you because you didn't want to go the world way. You stick to the world. You believe that God will make it with you. Amen. Amen. And so the world solution seems to be temporarily easy. But at the end, the world way the Bible way is the longest lasting solution on earth, on any matter. Praise the Lord. Amen. When God makes you rich or blesses you, that blessing was going to be family. When the person dies, the children will still continue. And when that one, the children will still continue because God's blessings comes to generations. When you are going in the world with your connections, with your contacts, you need to be alive to keep it. <laughs> Amen. Uh, if you are real contracts, because the governor is your friend. The governor is your friend. So when the governor is removed, you have to walk up to another governor. And then eventually, when you die, if your children are not connected to the governors or the government, everything will happen, but you will never for it. That's the way the world works. But when you bequeath a tradition of faith onto your children and to your children and children, what God has given to you will stay. Because God is able to keep it. Praise the Lord. So in Romans chapter 2, verse 1, Paul says, I beseech you. 
or I beg you, brethren, by the mercies of God, by the help of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Now, when we get born again, when we get born again, our body becomes a living sacrifice. But beyond being a living sacrifice, Paul said we should present that body to the Lord. The Lord what it means to present something to somebody. That person is in command of that thing. If I present something to you, I say, take it. It means that you lose authority. I lose authority over that thing I present to you. You become the new authority over that thing. Paul says, by the mercy of God. Why do you say by the mercy of God? Ordinarily, it's not easy. Remember what I told you about grace? Grace is God's ability coming upon you to do what naturally you won't be able to do. Presenting your body as a living sacrifice unto the law is not naturally easy. Let me bring that Because there are so many things your body will have to, will have to do. Amen. There are so many things your body will have to do. So now, when you now present your body as a living sacrifice unto the law, you become restrained. You are conditioned by the word of God. You become restrained. You can't just do things the way you used to do it anymore. Paul says the love of God restrains us, constrains us. He said, it's not that we cannot do what God has used to do, but we can't do it anymore because we are there is a restraining power. You can't do it anymore. You can't do it anymore, praise the Lord. You can't talk anyhow anymore because when people hear you, they are hearing Jesus. Remember when we said that our temple, our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. It means that the Holy Spirit is the one that operates in us and through us. So when you speak, let me explain like this. Let me explain like this. When I minister to people and cast out devil, you know when the devil manifests clearly through them. You know. Of course, I know. With the person's eye closed, the person will see you. Of course, that tells you it's not the person because the eye is closed. You will bring communion to the person, the eye is closed. As the cup is coming, the person will close the mouth. You will try to make the communion. This person in Rome will normally take the communion. But now, <clears throat> when the death takes over, the entire body, because that is a battle. When you are about to cast the devil out, there is a, 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 a wrestling. Let me put that down. Paul said, We do not wrestle with flesh and blood. That is what you see actively in the church in deliverance. So, when you try to minister communion to a person, with the eyes of the person closed, the person will avoid to take the communion. The person will close the mouth. As you are coming, well, as I'm coming, the person will be touching you without the eyes. Why? Is the demon that is functioning in that person? It's the demon. If you try to open the mouth of the person by force, you can't open it. These things I have experienced it, I have done it. Until you say, in the name of Jesus, I command the mouth to be opened. And suddenly, the mouth will open. And then I support the communion. There will be a loud shout. This is the communion we drink by this, and this is uh, Coca Cola. In the battlefield, it is something else. It's atomic bomb. In the battlefield, this communion of the blood is atomic bomb. It's nuclear weapon. Are you hearing me? Yes, These things to learn in this class. To learn in this class. So, what I'm trying to say that the demon takes over that person completely. When we present our body, Unto the Lord as a living sacrifice, the Spirit takes over our body entirely. Too. He speaks through us. You can't see the Holy Ghost physically walking. Have you ever seen the Holy Spirit? You cannot see, you cannot see demons also. Amen. Amen. Now, when I 
have dealt with certain level of demons, deliverance. You, you, you hear that smell. You smell the demon. This one. You smell. In the same way, we also carry an aroma of Christ. When you walk into a place, depending on your level of fellowship with God, though, there is a, a fresh smell about you. It has nothing to do with the fear. It has nothing to do with the fear. Praise the Lord. And the Bible said that we are the aroma of Christ. We are the aroma. We dispense. You know, when we go, we are smelling good. So, Paul says by the message of God, it tells us that by your ability, you cannot present your body as a living sacrifice. No, you want your body to do what you gave your body to do. Amen. <laughs>